In this demo, I'm going to show you how to provision and use as well as scale and clone an autonomous database. The first thing we need to do is log into our Oracle Cloud account. So I'm doing that right now. Next, we need to uh, supply the username and password so to complete the login. And then I'm just going to hit the sign in button. Once signed in, what you'll open is My Service Console. There you can have a customized dashboard. You can follow a guided tour for the different types of services, or you can go up to the left-hand side, click on the hamburger menu, and actually get a full list of all the services there. I know I want an autonomous transaction processing database, so I'm gonna click on that, select my region, and what that'll do is it'll actually open up the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console for me. I'll be in my own compartment and in the autonomous database section, so I can either filter my autonomous databases by workload type, uh, or I can view them all. Now, since I don't have any right now, let's go ahead and create one. When you are creating, you get to choose between an autonomous data warehouse or autonomous transaction processing, which is what I'm gonna pick. You can change the compartment as well as the display name. So since I'm gonna run the swing bench workload later on um, to show you using JSON, I'm gonna call it swing bench ATP. And then I need a database name. Again, it needs to be unique. I'm gonna go with SBATP. Then I've gotta select the CPU count. Now I can pick anywhere from 100, and 28 down to one, so I'm gonna go with two. Same with the storage, I'm just gonna go with a single terabyte minimum storage on this to begin with. Now, next I need to give it a password. You see there in red, it's giving me some guidance on what that password criteria must be. Once I meet that, I just need to go ahead and confirm that password. And then I need to make my final decision. I need to decide if I'm going to subscribe to new database software licenses as part of this service, or use my organization. In other words, my organization already has database licenses, so I'm gonna go with that option. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create my autonomous database. So as you can see, that database is already provisioning for me. Um, you'll see a number of buttons across the top of the screen there that are used to control this service once the database has been provisioned, but they're currently grayed out. You see the decisions I made during the provisioning, things like CPU count and storage. There's an additional action button that can allow me to manage the servers uh, in a few other ways, as well as being able to stop or terminate that session. So then at the very bottom, you see backups. Now these backups are automatically going to be created on a nightly basis for each of the autonomous databases, but you do have the option to create a manual backup also if you wish. Those backups will be kept for 60 days. Oh wow, there it is already. Our autonomous database is ready. So let's get the connection information so we can connect SQL Developer to it. Now it comes with multiple predefined services. All the information I need to connect though is actually gonna be supplied for me in a secure wallet. All I need to do is give uh, an encryption key password for that wallet, confirm my password and hit download. And what you'll see there, boom, there it is. I have a new file called wallet underscore sbatp.zip that I'm gonna to use to be able to connect my SQL developer to my autonomous database. So I'm gonna ask for a new connection it's a database connection that I need to give that connection a name. So since I'm going to be running SwingBench, I'm going to call it SwingBench. And then we need a username. It's going to be the admin user. Oops, you need to spell it correctly. So let's do admin, which is the same admin we just created as part of the provisioning. So it's the same password that I used when I provisioned the autonomous database. I'm going to save that. And since this is a cloud wallet type connection, I need to tell SQL developer where that wallet is. So remember it's in my downloads folder. We just downloaded it. Um, you'll see there I have a number of wallets, but I need to find the one for the SBATP. I don't need to unzip the file. I just need to tell it which service I am, you need to, it, we want to connect to. So there are five services. I'm gonna go with medium. And now that I've submitted all the information, let's go ahead and save it. Now, I'm also gonna test that I've entered everything correctly. So I'm running a little test right now. We're gonna look at the status in the lower left-hand side of the window there. You see I've hit got success. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my swing bench instance. And you'll see it already there now in saved in my connection list. And let me just 
run a script that I already have. So I'm going to create the Swing Bench user. I'm going to give it some privileges. We're going to create a table that's going to allow me to be able to actually do JSON documents in the Oracle database. I'm going to store and manipulate JSON documents via my Swing Bench workload. So let's go ahead and connect to our ATP database that I have running there in the London region. And what I'm doing here in Swing Bench, what you're going to be looking for is that fourth column across, the one that's marked TPS, that's going to show you the number of tran JSON transactions that this workload is running against my instance. Now we're getting about 2000 transactions per a second, but if we look at the database monitor there at the bottom of the screen, you realize that we're actually quite CPU bound. So let's go back over to our cloud console and we're actually going to scale up our workload. Remember, it only has a CPU count of two right now. So let's bump it up to eight. So I simply go into the scale and hit update. And then you see instantly the scaling is in process. Those six additional CPUs are getting added to our service. So let's go back over and see what's going on with the application. As you can see, the application does continue to run during this whole um, scaling process. That's the nice thing. It's going to take about two minutes. So we'll just speed it up here a little bit. Um, so that we can see the result of that. But as you can see during that whole process, the, um, workload continues to run. The additional CPUs are now taking effect. And if you look at the database monitor in the middle of the screen there, we'll see the dotted line that's currently sitting at two CPUs bump up. There it goes to eight CPUs. And we'll see that we're now processing far more transactions a second than we were. We're getting about seven and a half thousand transactions a second now from our workload. And all of this scaling um, and processing has continued completely online. So now that we've got our production database going, let's go ahead and create a clone so that we can have a test environment. Now, when you're cloning autonomous databases, you can do a full clone or just a metadata clone. Metadata clones gives you the full database schema without any data. But since we're creating our um, test environment, I'm going to do a full clone. I need to give that clone a display name. I'm going to call it SBATP2. It needs a new database name as well. I'm going to go with the same SB ATP2. And then we need to decide how many CPUs we want for that. So I think we'll stick with just one CPU and one terabyte worth of storage since this is just going to be a test environment. Finally, I need to set a new admin password. The admin password doesn't get cloned along with the database, allowing you to be able to give the testers their own admin password without having granting them access to the actual production system. So now we've got that again. I need to decide, do I want to subscribe or bring my own licenses? I'm going to bring my own and boom with that. We're already provisioning a clone of our production environment. So it's going to take just a few minutes for that clone to provision. But if we look back here at the dashboard, now you see I've got two different autonomous databases, my original production environment and my clone. And you'll see the clone is provisioning there. It just take another couple of moments for that clone. Oh, there it goes to be available. And so now I have two autonomous databases, one production and one test.